Hey guys, it's Jason here. We're looking at the Ultra again. And today we have got it set up in four cable method with my FM3. This is a live rig that I've actually used with the amp. Just to give you an idea of kind of how this is all configured, right? Guitar, my lead here is coming into the input of the FM3. It's a standard four cable method setup. You can you know look up on the internet, there's you know quite a lot detailed there. Leon Todd actually has a great video showing how to set up the FM3 in four cable methods. So we come out of here into the front of the amp via the effects loop, we're in and out again, and it allows you to set up effects on the FM3 both both before the amp into the front and into the effects loop. So I've got some you know kind of stomp box style stuff sitting in front and I've got some time based effects sitting in the rear. Now what's interesting about the setup or you know really convenient I find for a live rig is the MIDI functionality right so I am running the MIDI out on the FM3 into the input on the head first alter and I have got scenes set up I've got eight scenes right so in an FM3 or an X8 actually or an XFX I should say uh, one preset you can have eight scenes so we've got eight different tones here and I've got these set up on the uh, FC12 I've got my four I've got like a you know clean on scene one right channel two vintage channel two and modern and channel three uh, and vintage and I can get to my second lot of scenes by pressing each one a second time so here I am on channel one right or scene one and I can flip between two different modes there and if I go to the second scene I've got two variations on channel two there on the app right and then on the third scene I've got two variations there so you get the idea right so um, just a quick run through right I'm just going to go through these main sounds um, and in terms of kind of setting up you know a live rig that's got all the functionality of you know the kind of a thing that you get on a box like this paired with a tube amp it's a pretty cool way to set things up so let's start where I was in the play-in which is scene one channel one um, I've got a little bit of compression in front right? so you might see on the screen here I'll have that on I'll have that on the clip right, I've got a compressor running in front of the clean channel which I can turn off like this <laughs> The second mode, or the second scene on channel one, I've got the more aggressive bright cap. This is bright too, so this kind of really brings us into a bit more of a uh, plexi kind of setup, right? So it's quite an aggressive bright cap on channel one here, the bright two. You can see I just bring the delay in there, right? Let me go to the next single coil. channel 2 
This is channel two straight up in vintage voicing uh, and just a little bit of reverb in the effects loop here. So yeah, I've got stone boxes out front, right? So I can just kind of bring on the uh, the bottom row of the FM, sorry, the bottom row of the FC12, I've got, this is my standard kind of setup, right? I've got a flanger, a phaser, I've got a drive pedal that I can bring in front here, which I rarely use, but it is there. Um, I've got pitch here, so I often run this in stereo, so sometimes I'll set the amp up and I'll slave out. I'll come out of the FM3 in stereo and slave into the effect return of another head into two cabs. That's massive, right? So this is set up for that. Um, I can bring the delay in and out here. And I've got my scenes selectable on the top here. So let's go to the second scene on channel two. Uh, this is the vintage voicing again, but with the bright caps in. And this is kind of reminiscent of, you know, good old fashioned um, late 70s Marshall. Let's go to scene three. This is channel two in the modern voice scene, right? So now we're starting to get into more modern martial territory here. And the next one is uh, this is channel 2 in modern voicing with the clipping function in <laughs> Alright, moving along to the next scene we are, yeah, scene four, right? Channel three, and here we are in channel three. This is um, in the vintage mode, which in channel three is one of my kind of favorites, right? So um, channel three in the modern mode's cool as well, but I do like channel three in vintage voicing. It's just kind of big and fat and cool. Uh, this is with both brights on, and uh, let's have a listen to this. <laughs> And hit it again, and we are in channel three again, still in the vintage voicing, and this is with the clipping in. Right, so this is another one of my favorites in terms of the channel three voicings. <laughs>
All right, bit of delay there at the end. Um, so this is kind of just a, an example right, of how you might set an amp like this up. It's got the MIDI function inside the amp, so it's fantastic to pair this with a unit like the FM3 that's fully MIDI capable. And the way I actually set this up right when I'm using this in a live situation, I always place the FM3 back with the head right, and run short cables uh, to and from the FX loop and into the front of the amp and then run a single cable, right, this uses XLR cables right on the FC12, you, you might be aware, and I can just run a single cable out to the FC12 out front and I'm not running audio cable back and forth and back and forth to a pedal board, right, just using this as a controller and everything stays in the back line. It's a killer setup, low noise, it's fantastic. Okay, so I thought I'd just step through how I have the FM3 set up, what effects I'm using, and a little bit about kind of this, the general audio settings. So in four cable method, of course, what you do is you set up effects before the amp, and this is this first chain of in the FM3 here, right? Okay, so this is from the input, and output two goes into the front of the amp and the bottom row is what's going on in the amps effects loop all right so from the guitar i'm plugging into the input of the fm3 here i've got one two three four five kind of stomp box you know that i can activate with the fc12 from output two i'm using a humbuster cable that I made myself. It's short, it's less than a meter. Uh, if you want to know about humbuster cables, just have a look at the uh, documentation, either for an X3 or FM3, it's all set out there. They work pretty well. Um, from the Alters effects send, right, the effects loop send, it comes back into input two here. And then I've got some time-based effects here. Uh, and the out one, this is an XLR, right? An XLR uh, jack on the FM3. So this goes into the effects return on the Alta. So you need to have an XLR two quarter inch jack. And again, I just made that myself. Um, again, in the FM3 uh, manual, it sets out how to do that. So let me, let me just go through these. I just want to kind of show you um, how I've got this dialed in, right? So I won't go through all the parameters, but they're here and you can see them, right? So I do like the Clyde Wah. Got a nice big throaty kind of, you know, fat sound, right? Moving on, here's the compressor that I was using, that I you know, use here. I do like the tube one. There's a bunch in here, right? The FM3 is pretty awesome on all this stuff. Um, of course, it's the good old MXR-117 flanger as used by uh, Mr. Eddie Van Halen and these settings here will get you pretty close to how he set up that flanger, right? So these three here are kind of 11 o'clock and you can play with the feedback here um, to dial in how much you want but that that's pretty killer right there and of course good old Script 90 MXR uh, phaser, um, again, just play with the rate, right, to get this kind of where you where you, where you want. And you can see the settings here. I, th I think most of this is left kind of stock. Again, this is a very true representation of the real deal. Um, on the drive block, I, I, I can actually select, I've got a bunch in here, right, I've got different types in here. I've got a, you know 808 and a straight up clean boost and so on, but the Super Overdrive, the SD1, is kind of what I use mostly. I, as I said in the clip, I don't actually use a drive pedal hardly ever. I don't need it with this amp. Um, if I want gain, I just go to channel 3. However, this is how I set it up, right? I kind of have the level max and the drive right back. There's, you know, that's no secrets there, right? Everyone does that. Um, right. Uh, so this is stereo pitch, right? So this is set up in mono, and I'll tell you about how I kind of use this mixer block. But I do run a copy of this preset for stereo setups as well, which I mentioned. And so the pitch detune here minus and 
uh, plus nine cents gives you a massive spread. So it's pretty cool in mono as well, actually. Even in mono, it's like a you know a nice kind of chorus effect without without it kind of wavering all over the joint though. So here's the reverb block. It's chorus hall, right? I've, it's pretty subtle. I don't have a lot of it dialed in. You can see that I'm running this in parallel to the dry signal. Um, and when you run these guys in parallel, of course, you set the mix at 100 and then you use the level to dial in how much actually mix uh, that you want. You know, uh, this is pretty subtle. It's just enough to give it a little bit of ambience. I don't like playing with a lot of reverb. I like it tight. Um, but yeah, a little bit there is nice to fatten it up a bit. The delay... And again, even in mono, this works great. I'm using a dual delay here, and you can see I've got it pan left and right. And this is set up for a stereo rig. Um, but even in mono, it's it's awesome. I love this kind of the mixture of the the you know quarter note and a dotted eighth. Again, this hardly revolutionary, but the mix together is cool. In mono, it's, it's even awesome like that. And so the mixer. I'm using this block here. Here I am clicking on it like it's like I think I'm in the FM3. These are just screenshots. Um, anyway, uh, I just set this up as mono. All right, so what this is doing is just forcing the mix into mono. This because it, at this point it's broken into stereo, of course, and that just means that kind of this whole preset here, I just copy and paste um, and change the mixer to mono, and I'm running standard four cable method. And I have a copy of this preset, which is stereo. Everything else is exactly the same. The mixer block is not there. And um, I'm in, I don't know, what do you call that? Five cable method or something? Something like that. And um, MIDI. Oh, let's have a look at this. So this MIDI block is cool. You get a, uh, when you change the scenes, what this MIDI block will do is it'll push out through the FM3's MIDI out, anything that you have set up in this. So I just have a program change message for each scene, right? So scene four, it sends program change four to my amp, right? And that's activating the uh, switching options on the amp. So I just have one program change per scene, right? So on the Alta amp, I've just you know configured in and stored the settings I want for each scene. And scene one will send program change one, scene two will send program change two, so on and so forth. Here's how I've got the SC12 set up. And as I showed in the clip, um, I've got my scenes kind of running at the top here. All right, so effectively it's you know the four core scenes. When I click each one of these a second time, it flicks into uh, a second setting for that channel. So I kind of had it set up that each of these would be a rhythm sound, and then when I hit it again, I've got a lead sound. And you'll notice in the clip, if you kind of watch carefully or listen carefully, that when I click these a second time, the delay comes in because that's kind of setting up for the lead playing. Um, and here's my kind of stomp box arrangements here, and I can flick between just by holding these down, I can flick between two flanges, two phases, a couple of drives, a couple of different settings for the pitch, and I can toggle through four different delay settings with this one. Um, so yeah, this is like super, super flexible. Um, it's really cool. Now the other thing with four cable method, I want to show the settings here that I use in the audio setup. Um, again, this is probably set up or set out in the manual, and I know Leon's video covers this stuff, but the main parameter that I dialed in to get this as noiseless as possible is um, this one here on output two, right? So if you have this set low, like at zero, you, there'd be a lot of hiss will come in, right? So you just kind of crank this up until the hiss goes away. Um, this padding here, input one, it just depends on how hot your guitar is. So if it's a very, very hot pickup, you'll probably pad that out a bit more. 
6 dB is pretty pretty safe. And the output 1, minus 10 because the effects loop in the Alta is instrument level. So we want a kind of instrument level output that's coming back into the uh, return on the effects loop. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed a quick run through of four cable method with an axe FM3 or fractal FM3 um, and the head first Alta. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. Hope you enjoyed the clip guys and I'll see you next time.